Uh, my name is Mark Exner. Yeah, I've been at this 49 years and three more weeks. And I started 19 years old. This is a career, guys. It's not flipping burgers. It's a career. And the more you go around here every year, the more you're going to learn. You guys know there's an East Coast show. An East Coast show. It's, in, it's near Miami. It's in Fort Lauderdale next year. So you have a chance to keep having fun trips, swim a little bit with the sharks out there and have a great time and write it all off. It's great. Learn a lot. So this is the more, more the granddaddy of shows. This one's larger. It's a great show. Thanks for coming. Uh, what I want to do is just touch on for the 25 or 30 minutes we got primarily on removing ink. Ink is the number one oil-based soil and stain that we have to remove. It's usually the hardest. It's usually the most challenging. Come on in, the seats are, seats are free. So what happens here is we can conquer this. We can usually get rid of anything, right? On oil-based, it becomes our biggest challenge. Just like we know when we have something water-soluble, mustard is our number one enemy. Did you know that? Mustard is turmeric dye, dispersed dye, acid dye, and oil. You ever see a batter strike out in four pitches? That was it. So that's our number one issue. Second, of course, is furniture stain and a lot of the uh, fruit dyes and some of the synthetic dyes, like pomegranates, very hard, cranberry juice. But on the oil side, this is the thing we point on. Okay, so can you see me okay? I'm gonna get rid of that. Plus. So what we wanna do is do this generically so you can duplicate it. I'm not here to impress you. I'm here to show you can do this yourself, right? Then you learn something. If I just showed you how great a brand was, so what? There's nine other brands doing it, right? This is an unbiased presentation. So, Clean Rights a manufacturer, they make primarily portables. They've been around for a long time. Their um, founding father was one of the three people who started fabric cleaning, the, the fabric cleaning industry. Very special people. So, the oil-based stains are our number one uh, soil or stain that we move on oil. And inks come in three types. They come soluble, which means you can get them out with enough solvency, and we're gonna do that together, you can usually remove them. Or you can remove enough that it's hard for them to see. That's a very good thing. If you're pretty sure you got everything out, one of the old tricks is get the spot out, fluff it all up so it looks normal, and get away from, have them come in the room and find the stain. If they have to look around for it, they know you got it pretty good. Our job is to get it all out, right? Because we're better, right? And you also, right? I didn't say better looking, I just said better, right? Okay. So here's the point. If it's soluble, you're going to see, and we're going to do this together, you're going to see some color coming off in the towel. That's a good sign. When the towel looks at you and nothing comes out, you got the wrong remover, the wrong type, maybe you're not aggressive enough, but we'll work till you get it out. Semi-soluble is rare, but it means that some of it will come out. You might have a purple ink that turns blue because the red in the ink is weaker than the blue, so the red comes out and leaves the blue stain. Trading one color from another doesn't look very good. Maybe she'd rather have a purple one, right? But you turned it blue because the red came out. That does happen. It's very, the good news is it's very rare. Then you have what's called non-soluble. Non-soluble means that it's impossible to get the ink out. It's, it's actually permanent, okay? The good news is about one or two percent of it is non-soluble. So your high percentages, about 80 or 90 percent, are in the top one. That's great news. Otherwise, it's not usually as bad as it looks. Isn't that great? It's good news, right? And other good news, she thinks, or the customer thinks in general, it's a problem. And you took it out. Is that impressive? Just keep going like this, right? Okay, I need a couple people to help me because i got to get clappers going, okay? Because that way we, we track more people, okay? Anybody that's smiling, you want to clap? Okay, clap for me over there. There you go. It just makes it more interesting. Okay, so when we do a, so first of all, we want to know what the yarn is. How many people know how to fiber ID yarn in our industry as a rule? About 8%. 8% can ID a yarn. Yeah, I double clap that one, that's sad. Yeah, go like this, down. By the way, you guys got to shake hands with those later. This, this has to do with it. Does teacher have an apple? Remember those old days? I found these. I have a, a next door neighbor. This has to do with ink removal. I had a neighbor, I have a neighbor now, who's growing pomegranates on his tree. 
He's from the Middle East, and Middle East pomegranates are a big deal. They're really staple, and it's great. And he was saving part of his tree to give to my wife and I, the, the, the fruit. And I thought, this I play a lot of tricks on him and vice versa. We get along great. But I could reach over his wall and grab pomegranates. I wouldn't take them. But I decided to, to scotch tape apples to his pomegranate tree. So when he looked over, it was growing apples instead. And it, you know, some jokes go, this has to do with this. Some jokes go better than you ever dreamed. He had his grandson over, he's about 11, and he's you know, teaching him the culture, and he's a nice kid. He looks up and he says, Grandpa, those are not pomegranates, those are apples. And, he, and he, after three times, his dad, his grandfather looked up and there were apples growing because I scotch taped them to his tree, okay? So all I'm saying is when you have fruit, you gotta know which fruit you got. If you, don't, if you can't identify the yarn, it makes a difference. You don't wanna get lucky, you wanna be smart, right? My wife also has, a, a, we're gonna do a class in mid-October, 14th and 13th. 13th is carpet cleaning basics, one day, all the most stuff you may not know. Fiber ID, all the yarns, and the 14th will be fabric, all the basics. So I've got the books here if you wanna look at them. So the inks are more oily than any other and usually stronger and they're usually, but some are water-based. There are some water-based inks. Because they're water-based inks, we'll treat them differently. The good news is we don't always have to know that up front. We kind of find out accidentally because our water-based solvents we're going to use to turn oil into water also get those out. So we're going to we're going to get the the awesome deal of getting them out probably without realizing we're taking them out, and all of a sudden they're gone. It sounds a little funny, but it also works. Let me show you how it works. Now, don't always believe that every yarn, of course, has a different absorbency. Wool has 30% absorbency. 30% is huge. How many people think cotton's absorbent? Is cotton absorbent? This is 16 to 17%, wool is 30. Which would hold more ink? The wool, right? Harder? Okay, then you drop down to Sizo Jute, Koye, Seagrass, they're all about the same. Silk is at 12, nylon's at four or five, depending which one you get. And then you get into the, the non-water absorbent synthetic. So I'm gonna show you the difference between the polyesters you're cleaning and the nylon you're trying to get out. There's a big difference in most cases. Otherwise, you may get a different result in the same chemical. It isn't you, sometimes it's the yarn. We're good? So don't always believe that permanent marker is permanent. We're gonna to try to disprove that today. Fire away. I can, I'm gonna send you a free chart, by the way. And you can take pictures in the book. Oh yeah, they're right in the book. You can take them up and take a picture of the books. Yeah. So it comes down to that. When you want to ID the yarn, I'm gonna watch the time. ID the yarn, right? We have a yarn, we don't know what this is, right? Okay, this is a, whoops. The instructor just fell apart. There you go. It'll pop out again, it's Murphy's Law. Okay. When you have a carpet, which is most of what you'll do on, on ink, and fabric can work the same way, you want to get a hemostat. These are hemostats, you guys seen these? You can buy them in in um, hobby stores. So you know they're used in surgery, right? Okay. So when you look like this and you put them in your pocket, you go out to a party and everybody thinks you're a doctor. You're really a rug sucker because you suck rugs, right? But think of all the attention. You're gonna people ask you for medical advice because you got one of these sticking out. The idea you've been burning yarns all day because you've been cleaning, right? You take the yarn to an inconspicuous area and we take it by the if it's a tufted carpet, it'll have a layer of latex. You don't want to burn the glue, you want to burn the yarn. I'm gonna walk this around, maybe you can see this. The small yarn. You don't want to burn the yarn, you actually want to just get the flame near it. That's the secret, right? Because, can you guys see okay? You have my permission to stand. Okay. Watch how close I get it. See how I shrunk away from it? Like it was scared of it, you see that? So let's do it again, right here. So we'll get it, we won't drop it on the chair. See, I never burned the yarn. If it shrinks away, it's a synthetic. Is that good? You just eliminated half the chart and never burned the yarn. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. 
I wanted to show, show him a standing ovation. Go ahead, there you go. I just made that one up real fast. That was good. Now, if you have another yarn and you go to burn it, okay, I'll do this twice, three times. If it doesn't shrink away, go ahead and set it on fire. Don't worry, it's wool carpet. Wool doesn't burn below it. Is it burning? Burning, see it? Smoke? Okay. People never come to my class twice. So we'll burn it. See it? That's burning, that's not melting. See it? See that? Okay, let's let that cool off a minute. That way Mark doesn't burn himself in front of everybody. Okay. You know that tin foil makes a great ashtray? Cost you nothing. Isn't that great? I live in California, nobody smokes anymore, except pot. We just don't smoke anymore. Now, after, after this, be good? After this has cooled off about 30 seconds, it doesn't like me. Uh, all you do is rub it, and you'll see black ash coming off. See my finger? See? And you have black ash, now you know it's a natural yarn. It's that easy. See the black ash? I, any right. Then you just go to the, see how simple that is? Do you know how many people have gone to clean their fabric? I'm still cleaning. And I had a guy a year ago spent $3,300 for a seven foot sofa. Because it was linen. And what I tested was polyester. How would you feel? Oh, he was angry, not at me. Good? Also you want to get these, they're called ductile scissors. They're real cheap and they work perfectly. See how that is? Look, it can get down there right to the yard. Okay? So let's try this out. Unfortunately, I have less time I want. So look at this. That thing is pulling on my, there we go. Okay? What's this, what's this? What is this? You ever know what that is? Power the hydrogen? Because I want to show you how this works because your job is to duplicate it, isn't to make you impressed with me. Your job is to duplicate it, right? So we have seven is neutral on the pH scale as we go over here more alkaline, right? Right? Okay. There is no pH to worry about in ink removers simply because the initial thing you're going to hit it with is oil based, it's not water based. There's no hydrogen in, uh, in oil. Well, as you go here, of course, it's acetic. So the farther you go from seven, each number is 10 times the next one. Each number is 10 times the next one going this direction. How strong is that? Ammonia is a 12.5, is that strong? Okay, we clean with ammonia? Only on windows, right? All right, so that gives us an idea because when we're gonna turn oil into water, we need a strong water-based solvent to do that. It's gotta blend in. What is this? This is your golden formula to clean. It's called the TAC theory. And this is time, temperature, agitation, chemical. We're going to show you how this gets out ink and everything. Because I w once I show you the process, it's going to take real fast. So we have temperature. Do we like to clean with hot water? Okay. You have to be equally good at this without the hot water if you don't have any. Should you give the same results? As the customer should get the same results? Even if it takes you longer? You got good ethics? That's my girl. Good. Good for you guys. Seriously. Okay. But would, it, would I take it away from you? Would you beat me up? Probably, okay, right? Right? But if you go that, the most underrated is agitation. I'll show you how that works. So if you don't have temperature, it puts a lot of pressure on the other three. Right? Right? So on those basics, we know. This is one more thing, real quick, real quick. Silk? Silk? Silk, right? This is silk, this is polyester. Look how much they look alike. Look how much they look alike. You can pass these out. You can see on the back. See, I'm, so we get deceived a lot in little things. But this I want to make real plain to you. All right. So we have carpet. You like my mess? How did I do in kindergarten? Oh, I was the biggest painter in the world. How'd that look? Okay, good. Okay, now, it's going to depend if the customer decided to wash this first with soap and water or OxyClean or the proverbial person who goes online, gets information, it's all wrong, 
and they can't get sued because we never passed those laws to hold them accountable. I got I'm doing one right now with a $1,200 chair, and she put um, baking soda on it and nuked the back of it with a spot this big that was just writing. The kids wrote marker. If they if they wet down the ink before you get there, even if it's dry, it's going to be much harder to remove, and it won't come off. Okay. So we're going to attack this with an oil base problem. As we have an oil base, I want to do a towel that's real white so you can see it. Okay. The first thing we want to do is select. We want to select um, an ink remover. We want to have something that removes ink. Okay. It says ink remover on. This one says POG. Paint or grease remover is a common one we use. Okay. The ink removers will typically say ink remover. The reason is, our, is they're using an alcohol base, not what you're looking at in Las Vegas. It's rubbing alcohol. Remember that stuff, isopropyl, we couldn't find during COVID? It's a great ink remover. It also comes in different types. Let me show you here. So the ideal thing is something isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, same thing. Something with amyl acetate in it or acetone. You guys can take pictures if you want. So amyl acetate and acetone are found in nail polish remover. So you guys got to get in touch with your other side and go down to the drugstore and get or have your wife or girlfriends get you some nail polish stuff. It works great on ink. It's designed to. There's more than one way to get out ink. But when you get out ink with something designed to remove nail polish, it's the same base. It works beautifully on it. Just don't pour it. So what we'll do is we'll take the yarn and we'll take and put some ink remover on it. We're, all we're going to do is see how much I'm putting down? How much did I put down? So I only put it here. Can you see how it's getting lighter? It's an oil-based spot. We'll let that sit a minute, and then we'll do something real crazy. We'll blot it. Who blots? No, you don't. We all rub stuff. You know. And we'll turn it again. Do we get ink off? That's called movement. That's called movement. You want to see movement. You don't want to see it staring at you, not doing anything. It's got to do something, right? You want to see action there. You want to see something coming off. Just by doing that, how much did I get out? A lot? OK, that's oil to oil base. Remember, oil base, water base. Remember that oil comes in water base, too. You ever have butter? Ever heard of butter? You ever put in hot water? What's it do? melts it. If hot water melts it, it's water soluble. If your hot water solution detergent melt it, it's, it's uh, water soluble. If they, they don't and they bounce off, it's oil based. Did that take it off? Pretty good? Okay. Now I have an oil based solution dissolving the ink. Okay. I blotted out most of it, right? Now, did you notice I made them thicker and wider? Do you notice I made them a little darker? So you can see, otherwise the case was a little bit more severe. See it? I went from not bad, worse, worse, right? One, two, three. See? One, two, three. Okay. Uh, so I want to show you the difference. I've been in places where kids get into it and they go like this. That's the hard stuff. Okay, if they go lightly, it's a lot different. So let's get the same result on this one. And we'll work this one because we know that whatever we're using is working, correct? So we'll take our good, better, best. So we got the second one. Is it getting better? Good? OK. We'll do the real dark one. And you know it can be like that, huh? You ever see a dog chew up a blue pen? Do they chew it over the hard floor? They chew it over the carpet. The most damage I ever saw a dog, and I'm a monster dog lover, is uh, $50,000 in a house. 50000 damage. You talk about cats. You should see the damage dogs do, and I love them. OK, now, do you see the difference? It's not very good yet, is it? We've kind of taken that dark part out of it. OK, so let's look at the before and after. Now, after you've gotten that, you have an option since you've got an oil-based spot. You have an oil-based spotter sitting on it, right? OK. So they're both oil-based. If you were to take water, we're going to rinse this off with just clear water to show you, then you'll get a, some of that off. It'll just bounce. The suction alone, you have to have suction 
to remove the ink. You have to have suction upward. Even if it's a wet vacuum, you have to have that. So as we put this down and you go to rinse it, it's oil, it's oily. How is it gonna how is it gonna attach to the remover and remove it? It won't. So you have to convert the oil to water. Cool, huh? Okay. So we will take a traffic lane cleaner. We also can tack a traffic lane gel. You guys have the gel stuff? The gel stuff? Okay. Gels are, this is the number one residue thing in world history. It's known for that. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying they leave a ton of residue. We started cleaning on-site carpets in the late 1920s and our residue rates for 40% because everything was based in coconut oil shampoos. Most today it dries to an encapsulant with no residue. But this stuff is good, but it's great for ink. It's better than traffic lane cleaner, and I'm gonna show you the difference. We put this down, we don't put very much, do we? It's actually kind of bit. Now, this is what's called a co-solvent. Traffic lane cleaners are also called co-solvents. They mix with water and oil. That's your, that's your whole secret. We'll take, I'm gonna take the soft brush and I'm gonna agitate them to make them all loving and happy and all kissy-wissy though they like each other, right? It's kind of cool, you can describe this to your customer. They're like, really, this is fun. So what happens is now the co-solvent, which is oil and water combination product, blends in with the oil-based stain. It blends. So the, the stain, the oil-based ink remover, and now the co-solvent are all one concoction, but they're water rinsable, they're water soluble. Cool? Oh. Okay? okay? Now, to save myself some time, I'm gonna try this on the blue. Just because it's the same, it's ink, doesn't mean it may be the same base, maybe the ink won't come out. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, right in the zip, open up the zipper. Okay. No, that's paint oil or grease remover. Okay. The standard oil-based spotter in our industry, the standard oil-based spotter in everybody's kit is paint oil or grease remover. It's the standard product. So now I can take the blue. Oh, it likes the blue too. That's good news, right? So I'll work with that. I don't want to soak it. This carpet is a typical tufted carpet with a polypropylene backing. It's held together with a product called latex. How many people remember what Elmer's glue is? That white glue that the kids eat when they're in kindergarten? Okay, it's that on steroids. It's water soluble. And it loves to be weakened with solvent. So how hard do you want to get the ink remover? So if you get a puddle, that's usually when you cut them. So we got our co-solvent down, right? We kind of married them together. We got all the ink we get out of here, right, theoretically. So, because why it's oil-based, you can try all the different ink removers. Then we'll try to marry them together with a co-solvent, okay? It doesn't take much, as long as they're happy and they're on their way to the honeymoon, we're in good shape here. Okay? What about the heavier one where it's been scratched in? You wanna try that one too? So we'll try that. It's a lot more. We're probably going to have to give that a few minutes. And because we know it's the same ink, it also has an immediate reaction. We'll let that sit a minute. Now, we, have we kind of married these first four? We made them all happy? Let's see what happens when we kick them off the carpet. Hey, get them over here. Where'd he go? It's not coming on. No, tell him. Tell him it didn't come on. Here you go. It's on? It's on. How come I don't hear a vacuum on it? Watch this. Don't clap yet. Okay. I just go one up. 
Is that good? Yep. Now I'll put it right back on. Okay. So if I don't get it all out, what do you do? Now it's water on it, right? So now we go back to reverse direction. You get lost in the forest, you go back to reverse direction, right? Right? Oh yeah. So we go back, since it's water soluble, we go back to the co-solvent. You guys that are using traffic lane boosters, the boosters work really good. They're, they're also a blended solvent. So here's the traffic lane with the booster. Because it's wet, we will use, it's water soluble, we'll use that first. We'll use that first, because the last thing we did was rinse, so we go back to the water solvent first. We can try to just re-agitate it, and it usually will get the rest out. But it, because it's a co-solvent, we can also go back to the petroleum-based one, because we have a choice to go either oil or water-based. We can put that back on and treat it again. Now we can, re we can put more of the co-solvent down, either the traffic lane booster, and we can put the actual booster down. And we can put that down, and you'll see in fact, I didn't even use the traffic lane at this point with the booster because it's a little quicker. But just don't soak it. Just get it on top. It'll, it'll go in. It's got a lot of uh, surfactants in it. It'll go a long way. And we wick that in. And we'll turn it back on. We're going to do the other yarn here before we go. If it doesn't come out, we'll repeat the process because we're only getting the yarn out. Okay. See all the gunk coming out of that? It's a lot. Can you see it? This is permanent marker, by the way. When you get done with your tools, put your hand here. And let that run through a second so it doesn't damage your tool. It gets the garbage out of the tool so you don't pull this out. And then you track it on the next carpet. All right, good? A little better? Okay. Now that was polyester. That's oil absorbent. This is nylon. Nylon will resist the oil. It's the only yarn that does. This can actually give us a better choice than the, than the polyester did. And how popular is nylon over polyester? A lot. By the way, you're stuck with it. Go to California, they're all green. You can't smell anything, you also can't clean anything. It's great. <laughs> you, no, it's unfortunately it's the truthful one. Okay, so let's just try the just try the um, yarns and sink of time, we'll just spray them down. If this was a genuine ink remover for ink specifically, you'd get even better results and it would be dramatic. Okay? What I'm really worried about you guys is hitting the puddles. The puddles. Because you're gonna try to go real deep and eventually the arms will come off in your hand in a hole. So it's suggested officially you cut those out. I'm gonna soak this through just because I wanna stink up his I wanna stink up his uh, table. Good? Don't worry, I'm taking this out. Okay, letting that sit, right? We put the, we can try another ink remover, it works better. If you put the isopropyl backed one on there first, it's ideal, but if you're paint or a grease remover, then you find the ink remover, go, oh, I can use that. It works fine, it blends in fine. We can put the actual gel down the co-solvent. I'm putting more just in the take of time, but you wanna watch this stuff, it's high residue. Also, if you're working, get, get a stiffer one if you want to use a stiffer brush. Don't do this to it. You want to angle it, right? Because if you go lighter and easier, you're actually breaking up of the oils and you're not actually damaging the yarn. It's when you start sawing it, you got a problem. These are really in there better. So when you don't get all of something out, because the co-solvent will mix with anything, you can keep mixing them because they're all water. The oil and the water just keep mixing. It's really cool. So let's go ahead and work that in a little bit more. See how it's getting lighter? That means it's dissolving. It's losing its color. Okay? You're trying to rob the ink of its color is all you're really doing. Now, once you get enough of this out and you're comfortable, you'll go ahead and clean the carpet. Your, your pre-sprays, you spray over that area, clean it as normal, and you, with a hot water, with truck mount or a portable, you'll remove a lot more of it. It actually gets better. But the smell is strong, okay? I, I get that. 
So let's suppose we got all we got out where our time is just about up. We'll go ahead and do this. Why doesn't that work? It's a really expensive nylon carpet. It's very thick. So I have something to work with because it's harder for the yarn to soak down because there's a lot of it going to stay on top. And we have an idea of progress once we rinse it. But rinsing isn't the last step until you feel you're really done. Now it's a great idea to get all you can of the moisture out. And don't be afraid to go real slow because the more garbage you get out, the better off you are. Now you see that coming out? It's real obvious to see it. Now you and I know that's not good enough, is it? Right? Not good enough? Okay. So since I did use, since I did get it wet, again, we'll go back to the co-solvent. The co-solvent that seemed to work the best wasn't the gel. On this case, it looked like it was the traffic lane cleaner with the booster. You guys, traffic lane cleaner boosters, you know those? They're out there. Don't over mix them. And we'll put that down. It has citrus solvent in it. How many people know about citrus solvent? Laminine. Great, great situation for them. Natural product comes from the rind of an orange. So we'll put some of the co-solvent down and it doesn't like it too much. The nylon's actually absorbing it. So we'll try another solvent. You have to have patience with this. The trick is wetting the yarn as thoroughly as you want, not going in very deep. You gotta keep it suspended. So some of this is going well. Some is a little bit more too permanent. It's good. Okay. Can you blot it in the meantime? Absolutely. I really suggest if you've got a towel that looked like that after the wash machine, save it for the ink. Put it aside, save it. Why would you want to use brand new? I'm doing it because it's a better demo, right? But save your old towels for that stuff. Why waste them, right? These are great towels. I buy them at Walmart for 72 cents. Gotta love Walmart. But you can always blot to get extra moisture out and then go at it again to so get some of the blue. So it's still, as long as it's bleeding, there's something you can get out. We'll go back to the, since we have it and the co-solvent on there, we can go ahead and go back to the ink remover. This POG is very good, but the problem with the POG is it's not an actual ink remover. Because I want to show you the work with what you have. Most of you won't buy an ink remover because you think you won't use it. Yeah. One thing you always want to know if it's nylon is that if it is a situation where it's nylon and it's new, it's going to have the acid dye blocker and the Teflon on it. It's going to react better than the next time you come back and you've washed off the Teflon the first time. Common thing. So these products are actually weaker than I would desire them. I use ones that are stronger. But it gives us a pretty good idea. You can see the ink coming out. It's just isn't, it isn't good enough for me, probably good enough for you, but the absorbency of polyester is less than the nylon. This is quite absorbent. So it shows you the nylon it may stain and the polyester may not. I took this from the middle of your house in your living room, so I gotta give it back to the recommendation. No? I'm kind of glad this is giving me a hard time because I can prove a point to you. It makes it kind of a good sample. Now, I would go over as, can you see the garbage I'm taking out going slow? Look at the difference. I'll say one thing about these little plastic things. They show you where you're making progress. See it? So let's suppose this is the beginning of the job, right? If you want to get the big stuff out first and then clean, are you with me? So we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead. At this point, I'd block it off. Uh, don't use blocks, because the blocks, the blue blocks you're using, don't make a good marker, because it hits the solvent and dissolves the block on the carpet permanently. Makes a permanent oil stain. It's half of the cleaners. So you mark that off, so people don't step on it. You can even put a bucket over it 
and I treat it with, I dry it out as thoroughly as I could. If you, now remember, you're going to have some failures. You're going to have some near misses here. This one's kind of a near miss. Okay, it's kind of a good example of a near miss. So, we have we have an unacceptable result, but we have a permanent marker. Okay, not all that permanent. So what we want to do here is we'll put it, we'll put the actual ink remover on it and let it sit for extended time. Don't soak it; just wet it down. Block it off and clean it later. Give the ink remover maybe an hour or hour when you're doing other things in the home or the building, come back to it, good. And then when you come back to that, it'll be loose and you can reattack it again. It takes time and patience, but look at the hero you can become. I wouldn't want that in my room because I know somebody tried, right? The homeowner will never get that much out. Good? Were you good? Okay. Donna has, um, where did she, where'd she go? Okay, did you get um, sign-ups? Good. All right? Anything else? Standing ovations? 